Question 1. Determine OOTB functionality in Zebel. Answer. OOTB stands for out of the box. OOTB is referred as vanilla. OTB is the base functionality which is the Zebel standard at the time of installation of Zebel. It is done before configuring or changing to Zebel. Question 2. Explain how to create an event handler. Answer. 1. Click on Administration Communications All Event Handlers. 2. Click on Add a new record from the event handler list. 3. Enter the details in the event handler. Name. Specify the configuration to associate this event handler. Specify the event response to associate the event handler. Specify the profile for associating the event handler. Name of the device event. Order of event handler checking on comments, if any. Question 3. Explain audit trail in Zebel. Answer. An audit trail generates a history of changes that were made to data of Zebel applications. It is a record that shows the person who accessed an item, the operation performed and the way the value changed. Hence it is useful for examining the history of certain records, documenting the changes for further analysis and record keeping. Audit trial performs the persistence of data without any input from the users. Question 4. Explain in brief about cmch.txe. Answer. cmch.txe is one of the processes created when Zebel server installs depending upon the number of object managers which are used to enable the number of cmch.txe processes increases. Question 5. What are caching and purging in Zebel? Answer. Caching is the process of saving the query results for later use at the time of requesting the same query. By using cache, the cost of database processing needs to pay for the query once. Not every time of query running. Purging is the process EAI data mapping engine methods, which is used only in development mode. Purge method is used for purging the existing map of the database. This method is used at the time of changing the map and run after after the map changes. Question 6. What is link specification? Answer. Link specification is a field object type property. At the time of setting its value to true for a certain field the link specification can be retrieved in the child business component. Question 7. What is inbound and outbound in picklist? Answer. Inbounded picklist. In this process, values cannot be entered by the users other than specifying in drop down. Outbounded picklist. In this process, the user can enter any values outside the drop down. Question 8. What is the difference between MVG applet and PIC applet? Answer. PIC applet, a join based applet and displays every record that is available in the table and H2E. For example, if a PIC applet of address on different accounts applets is created, all these addresses are available in the database and H2E. MVG applet, this applet is based on 1M or MM link which displays the child records that are related to the parent that initiates the MVG and H2E can add add, query and delete the records of MVG and H2E. Question 9. What are the three major steps in the event handler process? Answer. 1. An event occurs that is similar to a call that is being disconnected. The events are forwarded by the telephony switch that communicates to the middleware server. 2. The events are forwarded by the middleware server and communicate the client business service. 3. The business service of the communications client serves the event and executes any action that is defined in the config data or forwards the events to business service methods or Zebel VB or Zebel e script code. Question 10. What are the functionalities performed by Zebel? Answer. Zebel is a software firm that design, develop, market and support the product of customer relationship management. This is the company that produces the CRM applications and provides other functionalities like application layer switching. This provides the content distribution of an application within many application servers. It increases the overall performance of the application and the system. The traffic distribution can handle the increase demands of the client. TCPIP multiplexing and connection management allow the reduction to be done in the connections provided through the server. It manages and allows the server to reduce the infrastructure. Web compression. It improves the performance of the data that is sent from the server to the client side. The redundant data is removed from the messages that are passed to the clients. Application data caching. It allows the frequently used data to be stored in the cache and server the purpose of increasing the performance on the client side and reduces the load on the servers. 
Question 11. How is load balancing maintained in the server? Answer. There are many applications that use the servers to fulfill the request that is coming for the data, applications or any other content. This provides lot of capabilities to give user-friendly environment to the client for the application access from the server. The load balancing on the server provides back-end application or the database servers. The servers allow the grouping of similar applications at one place and the services also get grouped at single place by using the grouping functionality. The services that are grouped together maps one or more servers that are used to display the logical entity. This allows an easy environment in which the application can be used to provide easy upgradable feature and maintenance options. Question 12. What is the deployment options used for load balancing with Netscaler? Answer. Netscaler is used in Zebul to provide the request to be transferred from client browser to the server using the load balancing features that are provided by the Zebul servers. The servers in this case don't require any configuration changes and it can be deployed easily without any delay. The server in the load balancing is directly communicating with the application server. The load balancing on the server can be done only after install the database server. This server allows the instances to be used in round-robin fashion. That allows the configuration file to be only handled by the server manager by generating the generate lb config command. The other way to do the load balancing is to get the request from the client browser and balance the load using different servers that are interconnected with each other. Netscaler in this case request the server to transfer the load to handle it in a more convenient manner. Question 13. Explain the steps required implementing the load balancer on Zebul servers. Answer. The load balancer can be installed on the Zebul application servers by using the configuration file that is given. The modification can be performed in the configuration file that is required by the server with the validation that is being put up by the server on the file. The steps that is required. Update the eapps.cfg le that disable the load balancing of the server by changing the setting that are defined in the file and by changing the line as enable virtual hosts equals false modify the object manager connect string that is pointing to the virtual IP and the port as well that is being used to connect the components of the object load balanced object manager allow the connection of the string to be done by changing the following lines connect string equals able dot tcp IP dot none dot none colon slash slash virtual IP virtual port zebel enterprise name alternate of the Object Manager Question 14. Explain the difference between a web client, dedicated client and mobile client. Answer. In web client, the application is accessed through a web browser. No software needs to be installed on the MC except the web browser. It connects through the web server. In dedicated client we need to install the client software on MC. Dedicated client connects directly to Zebul database. Mobile client connects through the Zebul server. Question 15. Explain the various steps involved prior to configuring Netscaler. Answer. The various steps to be followed prior to configuring Netscaler are 1. Check that the network topology is well planned and configured properly. The network entity also requires the load balanced servers that are in place of the same subnet. It affects the network and the way it is being constructed. 2. Select a plan in which the virtual IP address is used and the port is also configured. After configuring only the load balance balancing can be done that allows easy configuration system and allow easy to implement the server 3 installing of the net scaler takes place in the data center that is connected through switches and hubs and allow other parts to be connected for the communication for initialization of net scaler is done using the license keys provided by the vendor and then assigning of the IP address is also done 5 setup allows all the high performance to be selected so that the server can be considered in high availability 6. Configuration of the network gateway, subnet, and other networking components is being done for the use of VLANs that is used by Netscaler. This makes the server to see which server can be used for load balancing. 7. Setup of the machines allows the application and the networking to be configured properly. This also allows different components to be connected to the server properly.